Everybody loves a good mystery. Secret codes hidden in paintings and parchments are exciting and romantic. Anything so important it had to be set down in code must be well worth seeking. In this series, we'll be exploring some of the original clues to the mystery of Ren Le Chateau, the story that inspired the Da Vinci Code, and walking you step by step through the enigma. An important piece of the background evidence is the gravestone of Marie de Negri d'Ablès d'Autpool de Blanchefort. She was the Grande Dame of uh, Ronald Chateau in the 18th century. And it's the two gravestones which were on her grave, the pointed headstone and a rectangular flat stone which lay on the grave, these two stones are of significance and they need to be considered. They help certainly with the deciphering of the uh, complex codes and messages that are hidden in the famous parchments. Now, the pointed headstone appears to be filled with mistakes, but they are not mistakes. The argument has been made that the stone carver was illiterate, but that hardly makes sense. You'd hardly work as a stone carver if you were illiterate. Uh, the mistakes, of course, are deliberate, and these can be explained quite simply as an example of the sort of thing I mean. The stone begins with the words here lies, which normally in French is C-G, C-I-G-I-T. But on this stone it begins C-T, G-I-T. It appears to be an error, but it isn't. It's deliberate. What we find when we examine the gravestone is that there are four letters in large capitals, as it were, which are incorrect in one way or another, and there are also four small letters which are incorrect in one way or another. So we have two groups of four. And those two groups are T-M-R-O, the capitals, and a round E, two square E's, and a P. Those are the four small letters that are incorrect in some way. Now, all complex ciphers, of course, need a keyword. And this is where the keyword lies. The four large letters, T, M, R, O, can form only one French word, which is mort, M, O, R, T. It's the only word you can get, and it means dead or death. And the four small letters, E, 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 and P, also give us only one word, Epe, which means sword, dead sword. That is the key word to the cipher, the major cipher which is concealed in the larger of the two documents. The famous parchments supposedly found at Rennes le Chateau are biblical passages written in Latin, but when decoded, an entirely new message appears. The full decoding information for the longer of the two parchments can be found in Appendix 1 of Henry Lincoln's The Holy Place. The cipher is staggeringly complex. 
After the first, most obvious keyword is applied using the tableau de visionnaire, a second, longer keyword is required. The original letters of the Latin text are changed many times using a complex set of procedures. And finally, the letters are set upon two 64 square chessboards and unraveled in the pattern the knight would play if he began on a certain square and touched each space only once. One of the problems when we were first investigating this was that our prime source, Gerard de Seb, in his book, had told us that the cipher had been broken by the French Army Cipher Department using computers. Uh, when he sent me the decipherment, uh, I found that very hard to believe. And I went to talk to British Intelligence about it and they agreed with me. I can quote exactly what the cipher expert at British Intelligence said to me. He said, it isn't a valid problem for a computer. Of course it isn't. It's totally irrational. De Said was only telling me what he had been told to tell me. It is not possible for this cipher to be broken by computer because the steps to its decipherment are completely irrational. If you know that you need a keyword, how possibly could a computer program decide to go and look on a gravestone in the cemetery? It's not the sort of thing that a computer could even begin to approach. So, that teaches us that we must ignore absolutely everything that we are told about it and try to look at it for ourselves. British intelligence confirmed to me that it was the most complex cipher they had ever seen. It would have taken months of work to prepare and it's utterly unbreakable without the key. So, as they said to me, whoever gave you the decipherment must have the key or have access to somebody who has the key so we know we're dealing with something which is not just a game. It's something which is deadly serious. And that's why the cries that one hears these days that the documents are fake is totally ludicrous. If British intelligence are impressed by the cipher, then I think we should be too. People believe what they read or what they find on the internet. Don't do it. On our tour, you won't have to believe a thing. Come and see for yourself.